Hey everybody, this just came in the mail the other day. This is the Gal Studio Master Coin. At least that's what the store selling it is calling it. So that's what I'm going to call it. And that's what you can search for it under. Gal Studio Master Coin. It's a, it's a coin haptic. And the, in, the insides are interchangeable. It comes with cylindrical magnets and some spherical magnets. Depending on what you have in and where they're located, you can get some different sounds and textures and stuff. Uh, in fact, there's a diagram I'm going to post at the end here that shows you different ways to put the magnets in, but it's all kind of pointless because it's, it's a marketing gimmick. Um, I can show you two different ways to use this, and that's probably the only way you'll ever want to use it. Uh, for instance, this spinning part in the middle, that's all it does. That's all it does. Um, the outside, currently set up with four cylindrical magnets inside, so we have a nice click, but not the sound of the spherical magnets in there they roll around and you get this kind of a, a rattly, a grindy sound. So this is one way to go about it. Let's go ahead and pop it apart. Again, I've done this several times this evening. On the inside, you have uh, the base has some permanently glued in magnets. You have a bearing. And then in the top, once you push this cap out of the way, you have an R188 bearing that's glued in. And I'm going to put this magnet back. I did unglue that, but then I found out it was easier to have it glued in because the magnets kept popping it out. It kept interfering with the magnets when you try to change the installation. So here's how we had it set up. You can see these other slots here. Take a good look at this because uh, when I show you that diagram at the end, then you'll understand what we're talking about. It shows this pattern, and it shows uh, what can go in these holes, uh, whether it's a magnet, whether it's spherical or a cylindrical, and which way the uh, polarity is pointing. But like I said, the whole chart's kind of pointless because this this is this is one way, and I'm going to show the other way with the balls. Uh, let's go ahead and pull these out, and we'll put the balls in. This can be tricky or it can go smooth as silk. I just keep these balls in a line and then try to sort of manipulate them as I turn this thing in my hand, push them down into the slots. And when you get to the very end, they're all in there. And when you go to put the cap back on, you wanna be careful, there's a magnet right in the middle here. So you don't wanna get it over top of any of those other magnets. Go right for the middle and put it back together. Now this, remember we had four of these cylindrical magnets in it before. Now we have, what, one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve magnetic balls. So the attraction, you'd think with all those magnets it might be harder to turn, but it's not harder to turn. The only thing we've done is sort of changed it from four definite clicks to a more random kind of click because there's so many magnets. And if you remember on the base piece, they're in sets of two, sets of two, sets of two, and one in the middle. So you get a weird, it's a weird attraction. But it gives you that rice ball. If you have the Gal rice ball, which is the triangle piece that they make that spins like this, it has uh, uh, steel balls in it, not steel magnet spheres, but steel balls. And when they rot rotate around and get attracted by the magnets, they make a similar sound to this. So those are the two ways that I would use it. And again, uh, that button in the middle just doesn't seem to do much for me. Um, you can table spin it, but you can't do it in your hand, if I haven't said that already. Um, Gal Studios also does a very strange thing. It's like they're trying to polish a turd. I don't know, but they send you extra parts like this. Now, if you're not familiar, that is a clicky button, or at least what you would find underneath a metal clicky button on a different type of fidget. And they've given you two of these with no instructions of what to do with them. Now I'm only gonna point this out so that you have an idea if you wanna try it. I don't think it's worth doing. I've tried it, I just, it pisses me off. You know what, I am gonna do it. So the bottom one goes in, if you're not familiar, both of these little tiny little plates are curved. So this one that I'm laying in now, and it sticks, it'll fit right on top Remember, there's a button or a magnet right in the middle of this button. Uh, I'm going to lay this right on that magnet. 
and the bottom, this one that I just laid in, is laid in like this. The top one I'm going to put in is going to be curved like this, and it's going to crisscross this one. If you see, there's a bit of a cross shape there. I'm going to try to lay this one, and I almost got it. There we go. That's about as good as I'm going to get it. Okay, so those fit in there, and I've made them into sort of a hamburger patty sort of a thing like that, so now they're going to get squished. One by itself doesn't work, so you have to stack them up like this. But when you put it all back together, uh, now you've got a really pathetic click, and it's not really consistent either. I mean, it, it comes and goes because it's, 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 not, it's not meant to be there, and, and your button no longer spins. And to top that off, you know, you've put all that extra space in there and it wasn't intended for that. So now you have, now you have a rocky button that doesn't spin and a shitty clicker. So congratulations, gal, on uh, adding useless crap. Other than that, uh, it is interesting. If you're into coins, it's definitely going to be something you want to check out. Um, I don't know. I, I think... Uh, coins are kind of wearing thin on me a little bit uh, there's not a lot of a lot of uh, innovation going on and um, I'm getting tired of the same old stuff but that's it uh, if I can uh, you know what else we need to do quick before we shut this down is give you some measurements it's 35 diameter the button in the middle is about let me get on it now uh, 24. Not that that would matter to anybody. You can't, like, exchange it or change it out with your spinner buttons. And the overall thickness is just over 10. Or a centimeter. Now the weight... is approximately 60 grams. Again, I think I've only seen this available in stainless, so... that is your only choice. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, one last thing. Here's that chart. Oh, one last thing. Here's how to read that chart. Um, the gray circles represent spherical magnets. The red circles represent cylindrical magnets pointed in one direction. And the blue circles represent cylindrical magnets pointed in the opposite direction. So enjoy this chart, and uh, you can pause it if you need to. Uh, and like I said, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye.